I'd like to introduce myself. I am Elise Panich's sister. <laughs> and in the Cherry Hill community, that is my claim to fame. And I'm happy to take it. So, so proud of my sister. You know, in addressing my parents, I just want to say to both of you that I've had the great fortune, as has David and Elise, of witnessing the undying and unwavering love and compassion and support that you give to the family. And everybody gives back to their family. But what's so special about my parents is that you give it to the world. And when I think about the biggest lesson I take from my parents, it's that if somebody's alone, if somebody's sick, if somebody's having a challenge, you provide not only the resources, the finances, the time, the listening skills, anything available to help the world. We're like the chesed of the world providers. <laughs> and we could not be any more proud of the parents that we have. At least David and I and their children are incredibly blessed to have parents such as yourselves. And it is with great pleasure that David, Elise, and I present to you on behalf of the Colin School, the Lador Vador Award, and it's presented with heartfelt appreciation for your sincere commitment and devotion to the Poland's Day School. And on the bottom, they have a beautiful message, which is so fitting, and it reads, and the splendor of children is a reflection of their parents. So we congratulate both of you on this Hi. <laughs> There's not much else to say. <laughs> I think that uh, my children, who I'm so proud of, and my grandchildren, you know, set the stage, you know, for everything that has happened in our lives. Uh, we have put everything into teaching them, seeing them learn, seeing them be successful, and being a credit to their communities, and especially being a credit to whatever Judaism, you know, they were involved in. It's an honor for you to honor us here because you've done so much for the Jewish community in helping it in every possible way to inspire and to influence everything that goes on. And you've taken all the children and you've made them into leaders, teachers, professors, scientists, soldiers, whatever, and I'm sure they're at the top of their game in terms of what they have learned, starting with this as a foundation. Years ago, I was in the Marine Corps during the Korean War, and I somehow became a chaplain's assistant. I worked for the chaplain's corps, and I was assigned basically to the Jewish chaplain. And we had a temple, a very beautiful temple. And we had services on Friday evening. Through the help of the Jewish Welfare Board, who did a splendid job, they provided us with all kinds of wonderful, wonderful treats for the owner after Friday services. We were all stationed at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina which is the heart of the swamplands of North Carolina. There was nowhere to go. And yet Friday night came, and 30 young men and women showed up for services. And it was really, really a problem that I saw in terms of the Jewish community. We started getting numbers and we found that there were 1,000 Jewish men on the base, Jewish men and women. And they were training in various areas, many who were going overseas into combat. And I couldn't understand why they wouldn't want to come to a Friday service. It didn't make any sense. There was nothing really to do. On Sunday morning in the barracks, all of the Christian young men were getting dressed and showering so that they could make 8 o'clock mass on Sunday morning. And they did a great job doing it. 
but yet we didn't show up. So I asked the rabbi, why is this happening? And he said he really didn't know. He couldn't explain why there was such a lack of participation. And I said to him, let's interview the men. Let's ask the colonel to allow us to interview the Jewish Marines and find out why is it that they're not coming out of the barracks on Friday night. And so they allowed us to interview 200 men. 200 of the thousand that were there. And we interviewed them over the next five weeks. And you know what we learned? They don't feel comfortable in the jewel. They feel strange. They don't know what it's about. They haven't had any education whatsoever. They haven't been inspired Jewishly. And that, I understood, was the problem that we have in Jewishness. We have a large segment of people who aren't there. They're not there. And I said to the rabbi, I said, Rabbi, we need to change it. <clears throat> we need to get people here and we need to fill up the place. I'm not happy. I'm a very old salesman and I enjoy selling. And I don't like to see any possible opportunity go by the boards. We need to make it happen. We need to try to inspire them before they go into God knows what's going to happen over the next course of months. And so we set up a Jewish learning center and we set up a kosher club and we did a number of things to inspire some of the young Jews to attend, to come to, and they started to enjoy it. And we brought 90 people in to services on a regular basis over the next six weeks. It's one of the great achievements, and it teaches us one thing. Without education, without having day schools, without having participation from the community to make sure that the day schools are funded and the, the day schools are run without having the syrup of not making the budget. Why are we allowing that to happen? I went to Yeshiva Rabbi Chaim in Berlin as a young child and <clears throat> Would anyone care to guess what the tuition was a year? Dan, what do you think the tuition was? Not so high. Not too high. Eight dollars a month. <laughs> and yet the Rebbe's weren't paid. The Rebbe's were teaching in the school and they were not getting paid. And that was with a hot lunch. <laughs> And I said to my father, you know, who was a, a wonderful, wonderful Jew in every sense of the word. He was devoted. He laid Torah in shul. He was God's gift to us, along with my mother. And he's the one that lost his entire family. And yet he never gave up anything regarding his Judaism. I said, why is it? that this is happening. Why? He said it's very simple. We don't ask the community to support it. We need to actively go out and ask the, support, the community to support it. So my wife and I are here tonight for one reason. That's to ask you to support the Polish State School so that it will flourish from this time and forever more.
and let's set up a foundation. Let's do some things that will ensure the future when we're no longer actively involved, when there are others that are gonna pass the scene. We need your help. We need your participation. We need you to give us as much money as you can afford. It's <laughs> right to the point. My wife and I are donating $18,000 because we believe in the door for door. We believe that we have done has been passed on, and what's been passed on will be passed on to future generations. Before Hashem gave us the Torah, he demanded guarantors. The Jews made a number of suggestions, but all were rejected by Hashem until they declared, our children will be our guarantors that we will cherish and observe the Torah. Hashem immediately accepted them and agreed to give the Torah. Let us make sure that there will be guarantors. Thank you. to tell you a few stories, one in particular about this community and how wonderful they've always been to us, welcoming us warmly and with sincerity, and we always feel very comfortable here. 17 years ago, Elise was ready to give birth to Daniela, the young lady that was up here in the end. And uh, we came from North Jersey to babysit for Eliana. And Elise went into the hospital amidst a tremendous snowstorm. There were 30 inches of snow all over the area of Pini Hall. And so we stayed in the house. Ken took Elise to the hospital in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania. And then they closed the bridge to Pennsylvania shortly thereafter, and he remained there with her. And so we were in the house, but we were not alone because everyone from the community called to say, what can we do? Do you need food? Do you need drink? Do you need company? Do you need anything? And we were fine. However, when Elise was supposed to come home a few days later, there was a problem because the cul-de-sac was full of snow. And so we called the police department and they saw to it that the snow was taken out of the cul-de-sac. However, Going up the driveway, there was no way they could get Elise and the baby up into the house. And so the whole community again came out with shovels <laughs> and they shoveled the whole thing so that Elise and Ken were able to bring their new baby, our little snow princess, <laughs> into her new home. And it's just one example of the closeness that everyone feels for one another. And all I can say is that it's a pleasure to share our children with such a beautiful and giving community. And may you go from strength to strength and with good health, and we hope to be with you for many years to come. 